right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Good morning. My name is Tom Neville. I am the manufacturing team lead here at Synergist. Welcome to today's webinar, Connected Data Change Management. Today, we welcome Jeffrey Newton, who's going to be our presenter. Jeffrey's been a key part of the Synergist team since 2006. His career spans over 30 years in the manufacturing industry, beginning in IT and CAD administration before joining Synergist. Here at Synergist, started as a document control application consultant, and now he's a critical member of our team representing um, the PLM tools, so Fusion 360 Manage and Upchain. Before I turn it over to Jeffrey, I want to give a quick overview of who we are and what we stand for, for those of you who might be new to Synergist. Um, we have actually been an Autodesk partner and reseller for almost 40 years, uh, 39 years actually. We sold our first copy of AutoCAD in 1985. And since then, we've been one of the East Coast's most prestigious and recognized resellers, consultants, and service providers. We're also an authorized training center, so we offer training on all of the Autodesk products, both in-person and remote. Um, one of our primary focuses is customer advocacy. And what that means really is helping our customers navigate the increasingly complex world of software as a service, and helping them find competitive advantages in those niches within the Autodesk portfolio. We understand that customers are being presented with a sometimes overwhelming amount of information daily, and they're being pulled in all sorts of different directions. So we wanna leverage our expertise in the industry to help meet you where you are in your continuous improvement journey, and then get, take you down the right path at the right time, and have those, those sorts of strategic relationships and conversations with you. So with that said, this uh, today's content and presentation feeds right into that mantra. So with that said, I'd like to thank you all again for joining us, and I'll turn things over to Jeffrey. Thanks again. Good morning, everyone. So as I said, I'm Jeffrey, and I'll be walking you through um, our change management uh, connected data uh, spiel here. Um, what we have for everyone is a demonstration of how we can connect uh, Vault and Fusion uh, 360 Manage together, automate some processes uh, so that you can have parts of it working in one spot and parts of it uh, working in the other uh, collaboratively. I'm going to go over some slides here, and then we'll get into the meat of things. Make the slide go forward one slide. There we go. Uh, so quick cover of what we're going to be doing here, what we're going to get out of it, what process we're covering um, as an example. Then I'm going to show you how we do it, and we'll wrap things up. Oops, sorry. So the short of it is, um, the tools do different things, right? We've always got this ability to do good things in one tool, other things in another tool, uh, and getting them together is always always a stress. Um, for people, when they have these tools, they don't know what the pieces they, they, they have, how they can work together. Um, Fusion, is, Fusion 360 Manage is really there to handle your PLM cycles, uh, requesting your change requests, making sure that all your reviews happen, making sure that everything has been, all the boxes have been checked, everything's in order. Uh, Vault, while it has some of that, it's, it's very limited in, in what that process can have and is really geared towards the person working on the data, the person making the changes to the file. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make sure that the people who are responsible for those, those checks, those balances, making sure tasks are done, have one system to work in, um, and that the people who are doing the engineering work can stay in their system, the vault, uh, and continue doing their day-to-day -day work there so that they're not constantly switching if they don't need to. Of course, we've got some of the things we're trying to solve, uh, which is we know that vault is very engineering-centric, even its design, its layout, getting someone who just wants to look at the document and decide if the right things are done or what they asked for can be problematic if they're forced to go into it. It's changed management uh, is not flexible. Um, so it, 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 you can't add a lot of options. You can't decide that depending on what's happening with the document, it needs to do different things very quickly. So, you know, that's where we're going to go, you know, to another product to do those pieces. Uh, and of course, it's routing, it's rules, they exist. We can create those, those different pathways. But as we say, it's not intuitive. It's not going to be very... Um, easy for a non vault user to know where to put things, putting all that work back on the person doing the design work. So if we look at the fusion side of it and why we bring these together is that the fusion can handle, as I said at the very beginning, 
processes that are outside of just the engineering piece. So you might have a long lead up before you even decide you want to make a change to something. Those checks and balances can be happening in Fusion. Um, and then when you decide to say, yes, we're going to make this change, have it go and say, now we're ready to accept that change of that file. Um, there's lots of opportunity to make uh, changes or make different pathways depending on what's going on. We all know uh, the whole uh, topic around we have you know, changes that are under a certain dollar amount, uh, amount within, within a range or more than having that flexibility of, of having a system that grabs that quickly when we're making our change or being able to identify that and reroute the approval process based on that is what that brings to us. And because it's so customizable, because there's so much we can do both programming wise and out of the box with some, some, some key tweaking, um, there's just a lot we can make it do to add intelligence to the system so that it catches things like its ability to see have all the documents been, you know, released before we let you make the next change. Has someone stopped working on, it, on everything and put it in the system before we let it move on to the next step? So we're able to build a lot of, build a lot of those checks and balances in to the process uh, with, right within Fusion. What we're going to cover here today, and this is an example of what we're working on. Uh, please understand everything that I'm going to show is something we've made to demonstrate. It's not indicative of what you're going to absolutely have. You're going to have the option to change whatever you need. We've tried to design it to be what we see as sort of a baseline for a lot of folks. So we start with what an ECO process is in Vault, right? Um, when you're making that change, you're really just dealing with a check state. I'm either working on the document, like I'm starting the work, I'm doing the work, and it's being reviewed, or it's been approved, right? You, you, there's not, that's what I say, there's not that lot of flexibility in there, and this is the state you have. Now, we know that this review step could include many, many different, phase, you know, different uh, inputs and things like that. So what we're gonna focus on here is bringing this section and really between, after I'm working on it and before, and while I'm working on it, sorry, while it's being reviewed, Fusion's going to sort of grab here and make sure everything's good. And then as it gets through approve and review, it's going to make sure that uh, the right things are happening. So what you can see here is what we fleshed out for the Fusion side of things. We're going to prepare by creating a CSO. And that will allow us to then say these documents can be changed, right? So we're going to make the change, or, sorry, CSO, so change order, CO. Um, we're going to be doing our change order. We're going to be performing the change where we can still add more documents. Of course, if you realize you need to change something else because of it, it wasn't caught at first. And then we're going to move it over to review. And then any of your internal reviews, again, we can see that, you know, we have one simple change board, but this could be as many steps or as, you know, as, as, as uh, big a breadth, as wide a breadth as we want um, in the system. And it's still going to handle it. What we're going to demonstrate here is how as we move to these states, you're going to see how it integrates back to Vault and says, listen, we've moved past where you should be making changes, so we're going to lock that file down. If we put it back into a spot, a spot where you can change it, we're going to open it up to you again to change. So while these things are happening over in, in the uh, Fusion Manage side, you're not going to be able to then accidentally go and make more changes to a part or assembly. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to end my slideshow there because I don't need anything else till the end. I shouldn't have ended it, but that's okay. I'll do it. I'll just ask, do we have any questions? Any, any, anything anyone wants before, uh, before I move on from that? Don't imagine I've covered too much to bring up. Okay, perfect. So. <clears throat> what I've done, I've created uh, an assembly, all uh, nice, simple assembly, some parts included in it, um, and I've got it sitting ready to go. So I've, I've done all this great work, and it's never been in the system yet. So I haven't actually put this into, um, into any form of release yet. So we're going to actually start for right from scratch. Um, I'll ask you to bear with for two things. One. The process takes a little bit uh, to actually generate the files and put them up. So we're gonna have a bit of a pause there. And uh, I acknowledge I'm gonna be running the script that runs in the background. This is actually scheduled through the job manager um, to run 
but because of the limitations on how often we can run it, I don't want everyone sitting here. You know what it's like when you present, the mo you always do things right after the job last ran. So we have to wait a minute and it feels like forever. So just so you know, I'm going to be running things here manually. It's not what you're gonna have to do. It's just to expedite these processes here for us. So in here, I've done my work, I've got my files in. What I can do is when I take these documents, I'm gonna change, actually, most of the assembly. I'm going to change my state and I'm going to change them to publish diffusion. And this is what triggers and allows it to know that I want to send them up there. I'm automatically selecting my children, so it's grabbing those. Once I set that, the script is running and it knows that it's supposed to do something when that happens. For those of you familiar, we have our job processor here running, and you see automatically it's caught the files. It's starting to process them for me. And what we're going to notice, I'm actually going to bring this back to the foreground. Which ones it gets done first? We're going to notice the records refresh down here, and they're actually going to get workspace IDs, and this is a buzz I said, you have to bear with me while it generates the files, gets them up there. What it's doing in the background is it is creating items in Fusion for each of these things that I've loaded into the system. You can see it running through its jobs here, creating the items, doing its stuff, which means we should have there we go. So right away, I have the ability to see down here. And this is a little tag that we've added into our into our view that tells me some information about what's going on in Fusion. And I just know that it's got an ID, it's got a path, so that means it's there. Once they're there, we allow you to actually come and open it directly into Fusion from here. So if I want to be sure what's up there, what's gotten up, we're going to log into Fusion. Let me go take a look. There's our item card with all of the data from Vault in here for us. So we've got that represent representation up there to work with as well. <clears throat> so knowing that these are in here, we're going to start a new change order. So we have to create a change order for that first release, right? For that, we like these, they're good to go. So in the Fusion 360 Manage, we have total control of what these forms look like. We can create um, any amount of information or as little information as you want, right? So we are, have the ability to modify all of these to the needs of um, what you're working what you're working with. If you had multiple different product lines, different uh, uh, use cases for your documents, you could have different work um, spaces that used different front ends for what was going in there. <clears throat> we have the ability to change uh, what's required. We can make things programmatic, right? This is where I can do checks and balances to make sure um, that, you know, what I'm selecting was filled out or that, uh, you know, because of what's selected that other other drop downs are, are set. Now, there's a lot here. I don't have to fill a lot of it in. We haven't, again, for a, a demo, it's nice not to force uh, my hand into filling hours of paperwork. Um, but you can choose what is in here, including assigning tasks and all that stuff. And then when it comes to tasks, being able to say, because this is an initial release, you have to do these 10 things. We can also automate those processes down the line where we say, whenever it's an initial release, because it's coming from Fusion for the first time, or coming from Vault from the first time, we need these checks and balances added. So here are the tasks you have to perform. Okay, I'm going to save this.
Now I do have options here. So from this, I can take the affected items. And anything that's currently available will show up here. I've got all kinds of stuff sitting in there, but these are the web ones I want. Let me just add one, because I want to show you two things here. So I can add right from this screen. But as well, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And this is really handy, because again, we're talking about um, doing this from the engineer standpoint still, the designer standpoint, where they're in Vault. <coughs> I have the ability to take my files here and I can add them to a change order. So once the change order is created, the tool allows you to come in and find any, so, and if there were multiples, again, we have different work areas, workspaces that have um, the option of being looked for for change orders. So there could be multiple types of change orders I have in the, in the system, so I have options of where I go. And then any change order that's in that location currently in a state that allows for the addition of files will show up in this list. So there's the one I created. And I'm going to queue the jobs. Now, once again, the code's going to do its thing and keep running in the background for me. I don't want to have to wait for it, so I'm going to run it. Give it a little kick off there. And what we're going to see Is that my affected items is going to include every item. You can even see it built just on the refresh <clears throat> that I said I was changing. Now, at this point, when we're done our work, we're going to come in here and we are going to say, we have to do one thing in here, which is to change the life cycle. And notice that this is engineering release. This one is available. Um, it knows it's engineering release only because it knows that these documents have never been in before. So we do have that already coded in this case. So again, just seeing that logic, and you'll see it in the next steps when we go through our second pass that these options here will change. So I'm gonna point this out so you, you watch the next time. When we get through this, this logic is actually checking and it says these have never been out before. So the only thing you can do is release them. You don't have to worry about effect, uh, effectivity, but we could set an effectivity date. Save that. <coughs> and then, a workflow. We have the option to initiate this task. Now, we don't have anything set up to say, hey, it's first time, we don't need to make any changes because we've already done them. So we're gonna move forward one more time. An initial release, it would be easy enough to say, you've never seen these files before. We're not gonna then go and make more changes. We're gonna go right to review. So I'm just going to, actually, let me run this just to make sure everything is synced up. Actually, now that I moved it there, we'll actually see it'll sync up. And I'll go back to Walt and show you. Forward one more. There's comments, any you know system allows you to add some comments of why you're moving it forward, what's going on. One more time, and then we're going to go. Now these processes are very quick, right? Like they're not really doing a lot with the file. They're just moving the information back and forth. So if I refresh Vault here, my status has changed to for review. So that part of it, that locking down the files so that nobody in here can can modify the files, do what they you know do things to them once they're happening, by by virtue of going through the process of what's happening to the file, going through your product lifecycle up through Fusion is going back to Vault and telling it, because that's right, I want that one in the front, is telling it, let's make sure these are set in a status that, uh, in a state where now someone can't accidentally come in and start making changes to that while this is happening. We're gonna move this one all the way through. 
we know there's not a lot of review happening. It's an initial release. Reality is we've already talked about these a thousand times, so we know everything's good. <clears throat> so we're just gonna push these through. When it's running, there are checks and balances, of course, to prevent me from jumping this forward before the code is run. Um, but we're gonna keep doing it ourselves so that we don't have to wait each moment with that CW run. And we're gonna release it. One last time. Now this for us, this one will take a little bit of time. We'll talk about a few things, we'll ask some questions here. Uh, what we've got happening at this stage is on top of the changing the data in Vault um, to reflect that it's been released, we have all the release processes that happen in Vault as well. So we're gonna generate the step files, we're gonna generate DWFs if we need to. Um, all that action is also happening. So you know, those of you familiar with, with how the Vault part's working, you know that that's gonna, you know, our, our queue is going to fill up with some work there um, and have to process. So we're gonna let that, uh, that keep doing its thing. But the important thing is that status should right away Tell me that these files are released. Look at that, I've already generated this, generated this stuff files nice and fast for you guys. So it's also going to link these, put them together. Um, so all, all of its steps are gonna go through. We'll see them as we go. Um, but yeah, you, you, the key thing is we haven't had to be in here and we've been leaving the files, we've been changing the files, <coughs> excuse me, into states uh, to make sure that, that went so fast. So we can see that, oops, I won't this up, apart. There we go, I already did the attachment. So we can see it's created the step file and created the attachment for us automatically as it's worked. Okay, so we're happy. We're gonna do our, let me show you here, there's a, yeah, we're done, we're implemented. We're gonna say everything is <coughs> ready to go. And we're done in this state. So, how this would work? So, any questions about that part? Any part, questions about like the release stage or what we're dealing with when it comes to? Yep, you know this happened. Okay, it's always got to be something where I ask you to ignore the man behind the curtain. Um, so, any questions about uh, what we've covered so far as just taking a product into a release state, making sure that review happened. Um, and controlling it for as long as it's on that review state, making sure that no one is in vault making um, changes to it or using it uh, in an assembly until it's available. Any questions at all, nobody? Okay. So the next step, let's talk about where we go from here. So the, what we do once we have a product in, that's always well and good. We also know full well that the moment you get something to that release state, someone finds something that we've missed, right? We're, we're going to go in and we're going to say, I realize now that um, I should have asked for a safety wire to put, be put in that pin. Uh, totally, you know, just presumed everyone knew it, thought I saw it there. It's not there now. So what we're going to do is in Fusion, because I'm the person who saw the mistake and I know that a change needs to be made, we're going to go through this and show it how it communicates and moves that drawing, makes it available to be worked on. So I'm going to say I saw an issue. Um, fix the pin. Use safety wire hole. There's only one template in this case, so that's we have to use it. Again, anything I want in here, right? I can I can add in. Uh, if I choose who my approvers are in this state, that decides who's going to be able to approve down line. Um, you know, so I can have automated just pick a group, and one of those people needs to. Uh, I can add in a list of people and say, well, any of these three, or I can have a very specific. I've picked five people. That means five people have to approve before it moves forward. Uh, set up a default list and remove people for this iteration. If you know whatever configuration of of approval process I want here, we have that ability to build this in here. So we're going to save that. 
And then because I know what I'm looking for and I don't, I'm not the vault person, I'm gonna pop in here, I'm gonna add an item. <clears throat> and do a quick search, narrow my results down. And that's it right at the top, I want that pin. So I'm just gonna grab the pin, I'm gonna add that in. You can see it's currently on release, so I'm going to change. And here's where you see what happens. So now that it's not now that it's not released, now that it's that document exists in the system, it knows it's been through all those all the processes required to release it. Now our options are to revise or obsolete. So I, I told you to highlight the, to remember this section. You can see here that we now have. Um, we now have only two other options, which is I can either revise the document that's in the system or I can obsolete the part. We're going to revise. I'm going to save that. And I know everything is good, so I'm going to move it forward to my perform change. I'm saying, hey, I want someone, whoever is responsible, I want you to go make that change for me. Um, email notifications, like I could, if I knew the direct designer I was sending it to, in that list somewhere would have been who I want to do the work. Um, we would have fired off an email to them and tell, told them to go look. Let's make sure this kicks off. Oh, never mind. Right at the top. I, I I didn't see. I apologize. I was I was I was prepping for the error there, and it was right in front of my face. So there, you can see it's already set to work in progress. <clears throat> oh, the the danger of being always looking for the problem you just presumed it didn't work. So we can see right up front that document is already set to work in progress. So she's now it can be worked on. I can do all the typical things. I can check that file out. I can work on it. I can put it back in again. Um, not going to go through all that. We don't need to sit here and watch me, you know, drill holes into a pin in Inventor. So, presume I did all the work. Did a great job. Uh, I, I managed to get exactly what you asked for. So all we have to do here is we're going to change the state again, and we're going to change it back to publish to Fusion. When I do this, every time I set something to publish in Fusion. Again, remember, it's just cycling in the background. It's going to walk through. Do it. Oh, actually, it's cycle. I'm not even going to bother because I can see the cycle there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back up here. We're going to go look at the affected items. We're going to see sitting ready still. So we're going to go to our workflow. Now, what will happen here <coughs> is if I had five or six items, I actually, no, sorry, I'm going to move it. It's not going to let me move it through approval unless it's set up, unless I've got everything added, right? I can't send it for review unless everything is already gathered. So if I still have work that's uh, in review um, and not set to um, send to Fusion, then it's going to say, well, listen, you can't move it forward in the workflow. So we've got, we have checks like that in place where it prevents the user from sending half the model out for review. Um, excuse me. Okay, so in this case, same thing. We're here, I'm gonna keep bouncing back just to show you these things are happening. By moving it forward once again. Oh, see, here, here's the case where it didn't run on it. The minute's a long time when you're actually waiting for it. 
There you go. It's on for review. It automatically locks it back down for us. We're going to submit it to our board. Actually, let me let me show you not. So let's say in the review process, I find something that I don't like. All right? We, we realized that I'm not as good a designer as I thought I was. I'm going to send it back. Pretty straightforward. The, the, the workflow will only let me take actions while I'm allowed. Um, if I had to have 10 reviewers here, I would just sit at the state waiting for all, you know, nine of them to hit approve before it let you hit the final one. But we send it back because we found an issue. We can see it comes back to work in progress. So again, nothing, nothing that I haven't promised, but it's good to show it, show you that you're, you're getting what we're saying here can happen without any interaction back to the other system. So we're going to move it forward. If you're taking less than a minute to review things, there's probably other things going on. So there's never a chance that you're going to be pushing things through before the code cycles. And as well, there's error checking to make sure that if you did do it, when you're not doing it manually like this, to say, <clears throat> you, you, it hasn't run yet. It hasn't passed that last step. We haven't caught up. So you can't hit this button yet. Go ahead and change control. under the CCB review, so still a review state. We're happy with it. We like what we've seen. Not to finish running. What we'll have here, that for review one, is now released again. So finished its process, we're happy with the changes, the document's now available. Uh, if I were adding, if I had things on a CSO and I tried to add them to another CSO, you'll see, you would see that I couldn't add them. They'll show them to me, um, but not add them um, to that CSO because they're on another CSO. So I'd have to finish one up before I move on to the other. So to wrap up what we just went through, you can see that by integrating Fusion 360 Manage with Vault, you get that ability to put someone who's not engineering centric, or even if they are, who isn't doing the Vault work every day, lets them stay out of Vault, lets them work in a system. And it's going to go beyond just, I mean, the hope is when you're using uh, Fusion 360 Manage that it's not just for change orders, right? You're going to do um life cycle requests so you're going to have work orders in there and know when they need to be reviewed or manual like all kinds of um plm type work could be happening in in the fusion 360 manage so the people who are doing that are already in that environment so we don't make them come out of that to go do something else and it allows your designers engineers your your, your cad folks to stay in the design software without having to leave it to bounce to another piece very often. Again, if they're doing the CSO as well, um, or the, the change order as well, um, they might have to go in. Also, if all they're doing is the initial release change order, um, things you can look at automating. You could say, this is the first release. Let's just have it generate that change order um, automatically, fill out the details of the files that I've attached, uh, and have that sitting waiting for the person who's going to accept it, the person who's going to move it forward. You know, I'm a designer. I create parts every day. So I create 50 parts. I throw them in the system. You know, Fusion can be told to create the change order for that and assign it to the, the new person, person, the new product person. Okay. So <clears throat> all those departments, um, you get to do you can have any department involved, you know, that has access, of course, to Fusion 360 Manage, but it's a lighter piece, a lighter product to have a lot of people working in. Um, 
you're going to have those 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 uh, seamless back and forth, right? You don't have to have someone move to a certain step and then ask someone else to go make sure that you know, everything is locked down, everything is ready. We can set those checks and balances and ensure they're covered every time. Programmatically, we have the ability to build in, exception, build in exceptions. Um, we know everyone needs exceptions, right? You need to have that moment where that part needs to get released right now, where everyone has already signed off on it. So we can build those in so that they're not exceptions, they're controlled changes, right? We can have a controlled moment where we allow something to go out but it happened by the book regardless. So, you know, we, we do, we are able to build that flexibility in and still control the documents at every step of that. Um, and that ability to take from vault where right now you're just having that review that, that fairly simplistic, you know, peer review or, or check and make it as, as wide as you need, add all, all your tasks, make sure all the things are covered before something gets released where it shouldn't be. I appreciate everyone's attention today. Thank you for uh, allowing me to present this to you.